Nitrogen injection to prevent a hydrogen explosion was temporarily suspended at the number one reactor on Wednesday. The utility has been continuing the operation since early April. It's the second time that it has stopped. Now, the utility has not yet found the cause of the stoppage. Stupid! You're so stupid! TECO says the injection resumed after more than four hours. The operation was temporarily suspended also on Saturday. The utility says the stoppage caused only a minor change in the pressure inside the containment vessel and that there is no risk of a new hydrogen blast. Hydrogen is created when nuclear fuel reacts with water and pressure builds up inside the containment vessel. TEPCO is trying to identify the cause of the problem. Tokyo Electric Power Company has revealed that the March 11th quake probably damaged a critical piping system in Reactor 3 of the Fukushima nuclear plant. Humans are fucking stupid. We have been throughout our entire history and we remain so today. The utility said that analysis of pressure and temperature data from after the quake shows that the third reactor lost its cooling system on March 13th. Much of its nuclear fuel likely melted down and collected at the bottom of the pressure vessel over the next 24 hours. The analysis also shows that a crucial emergency system for injecting high-pressure coolant may also have been damaged by the quake. The system which is designed to maintain the water level inside the reactor vessel in an emergency is known to have automatically kicked in shortly after noon on March 12th. But pressure inside the reactor plunged over the following six hours. TEPCO says the drop in pressure is consistent with analysis that the piping system was damaged. The system is one of the plant's most important safety features. It must be damage proof. TEPCO says that it is possible a gauge malfunction may be to blame for the data fluctuation. Its engineers say more investigation is needed to examine if the massive earthquake damaged the cooling system. Well, TEPCO is still unable to determine how long an emergency cooling system at the number one reactor remained off after the earthquake. The malfunctioning of the system is suspected to have played a key role in the disaster. The utility officials spoke to reporters on Tuesday about the system, which is supposed to function without external sources of power. Operating records at the plant show the emergency cooling system turned on automatically six minutes after the earthquake at 2.52 p.m. TEPCO says based on reports from workers, it has confirmed the system was manually shut down at 3.03 p.m. 11 minutes later. It said workers carried out the step based on their manual. It was apparently meant to prevent damage to the number one reactor because the temperature of the unit's cooling water had dropped sharply. The system was manually rebooted more than three hours later at 6.18 p.m. TEPCO says the system may have been turned on at other times within that three-hour period, but it says so far it cannot clearly determine the course of events based on computer data and interviews with workers. The operator of the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says data analysis suggests damage to its reactors may have caused cracks and openings in the containment vessels equivalent to a 10-centimeter hole. If there ever was just one word to describe humanity, that one word would be stupid. Reactors 1 through 3 at the plant suffered nuclear fuel meltdowns after the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. This is likely to have created holes and cracks in the base of the pressure vessels protecting the reactor cores and damaged the containment vessels. Massive amounts of highly radioactive water leaked from the structures. Tokyo Electric Power Company analyzed pressure levels inside the pressure and containment vessels after the quake to gauge the scope of the damage. TEPCO said the analysis suggests cracks in the number one reactor containment vessel amounting to three centimeters in total may have formed 18 hours after the quake. It said that they may have expanded to seven centimeters at least 50 hours after the quake. 
TEPCO said holes and cracks equivalent to 10 centimeters in diameter may have formed in the number two reactor's containment vessel about 21 hours after the quake. It said a similar amount of holes could have been created in the suppression pool chamber by an explosion heard coming from there on March 15th. What I am saying here is nothing new. Human stupidity has been a great source of entertainment for us humans for as long as humanity has existed. It is a major cash cow for those smart enough to take advantage of it, and just so happens to be the guiding force behind most things that happen in the world. Tepco said these results were obtained through data calculations, but it has yet to confirm whether the holes exist. A team of experts from the International Atomic Energy Agency is visiting Japan to investigate the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The Japanese government says it will fully cooperate with the IAEA probe. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edano made a pledge on Wednesday when he met IAEA team leader Mike Waitsman in Tokyo. Edano said it is extremely regrettable the accident has caused worry and trouble around the world. He added, Japan is doing all it can to bring the plant under control, that it has made efforts to disclose information with maximum transparency. Adano also said the government has instructed relevant officers to give the IAEA their utmost cooperation. Mike Waitman said the fact-finding mission provides an important opportunity for the world to learn lessons from the Fukushima Daiichi accident. He said the team will submit its findings to an IAEA ministerial meeting scheduled for the end of June. We take pride in our stupidity, and we labor endlessly to invent new ways to capitalize on our stupidity. This team of international... Expect to hear what's happened and what is happening at the sites and the conditions at the sites. We want to find out lessons to learn, because the whole basis of high standards of nuclear safety is about continuous improvement. We humans throw a little dash of stupid into everything we do. We love being stupid so much that it sometimes hurts. TEPCO on Wednesday morning suspended the transfer of highly radioactive water from the number two and three reactors buildings to storage facilities. It cited the need to work on power equipment. We have no one to blame except ourselves. We, being the stupid fuck-ups that we are, have abandoned the ability to think for ourselves and instead given that responsibility to people who are often more stupid than ourselves so that we get to work our shitty nine to five jobs and live our stupid lives without the stress that comes with the ability to think for ourselves. The utility plans to move a total of 14,000 tons of contaminated water from the two reactors. The water in the reactor's turbine buildings and tunnels has been hampering efforts to bring the plant under control. The utility said it will resume the transfer of water from the number two reactor as soon as work on the power sources is finished. We want to be numb. We want our brains to be on cruise control 24-7. We want our opinions to be cooked in a spoon for us. And we want our thoughts to be given to us intravenously. The masses are all junkies just waiting for the next opiate fix. And will do anything to get it. But the company says it will not resume the transfer from the number three reactor for the time being. About 90 percent of the planned transfer has been completed at reactor three. TEPCO says the storage facilities are nearly full and that it wants to assess how much more water they can accommodate. The U.S. Space Agency says it'll start developing a next-generation spacecraft that can send humans to Mars and asteroids. The new vehicle will replace the space shuttle, which will soon retire. NASA said on Tuesday that the new, air, uh, new spacecraft will be able to carry four astronauts. The craft will be connected to a new type of, of rocket and a facility for long-term stays in space. NASA said the new spacecraft will be based on a crew capsule named Orion. The project is part of President Barack Obama's vision for the space grant, uh, program, which aims for manned missions orbiting Mars by the 2030s. To erase stupidity is to erase what defines humanity. NASA's shuttle program has led space exploration for 30 years. The agency will end the program in July after the Atlantis returns from its last mission. 
Observers say NASA's new spacecraft shows the desire of the United States to continue leading the world in space development as Russia and China step up their efforts. Thinking for yourself is a pretty hard thing to do if you're already stupid. So it's probably best to let a stupid fucking society full of stupid people do the thinking for you. What other solution could there be? You certainly can't trust your own thoughts. You are stupid, you know. A lot of stupid fucking people like to spend their time bitching and moaning about the problems of the world, and often fail to see the root cause of the problem. We fail to see the elephant that's in the room. We fail to acknowledge the fact that we are all just stupid fuck-ups, and we always will be. The reason society is fucked up as it is, is because it is governed by stupidity. The only true government that exists in this world is stupidity. Don't bother protesting it, because you can't resist what you are. 